There we go. Hi, oh, Bob. How you doing? Oh, Bob, Shall we've I done it my... now. We've done it. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Nice bug, Bob. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's it. We're there, Sat. We're there, man. Took we're, a bit here, we're here. We're there. Danny, I've, I've got to say that I think you've let the side down with your background. Sorry, man. Mine's, you know what? It's what it is. It's, um, uh, I don't, I don't really like to, um, you know, I like to keep it simple. What can I say? Yeah. Uh, you know, hang on a minute. Hang on. Let's, let's see what it reflects his personality. It's boring. It, <laughs> <laughs> that's much better. That, that says so much about you yeah. in one image. There you go. How's that? That's literally told me everything I need to know about you. You know, Danny said he was smart, casual, so I've come casual and smart. Yeah, yeah. I, I I like that at the back. What, yeah. I mean, what, what's that for? Is that for your own pleasure, or is that? Yeah, awesome? yeah, it's a blow up version of me. Is that your uncle? It's quite a blow up version, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I don't want to be real cigars, that's cigars, that's cigars. And it's got a lot. Of, is there's a lot of signatures on there? Is that like customers or? Uh, yeah. Uh, anyone who got a happy ending, um, yeah, that was it. They signed it off. It's not hate mail. <laughs> it's hate mail. It's hate mail. Well, look, on that fantastic introduction uh, to an interview, um, welcome. Chuckle Sings. Finally, I've got you together. Uh, it's great to see you. Um, Good to see you as well, Sat. Thank you very much. I mean, I've been thinking about this interview throughout the day while I've been working around the house, and I was thinking, um, you know, there's many uh, legendary comedy duos, you know, uh, Steptoe and Son, Malcolm and Wise, Anton Deck. And then uh, I think this is a pinnacle for me as interviews go to have both of you together. Quite humbled. Yeah, yeah. really humbled. Um, really? I was expecting that, Dan. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to sound arrogant, but yeah, we kind of expect to be into in that kind of league. Yeah. Really. Uh, step toe. Well, you're probably thinking more of the Chuckle Brothers. I mean, we are actually the cheaper outsourced version of the Chuckle Brothers. That makes a lot of sense, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. when I was going through, rattling through them names, both of you didn't flinch. So I, 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 I could tell people have uh, compared you to them before. It wasn't. It wasn't a surprise to us, to be honest. It's something we, we come up every day against. But yeah, but anyway, thanks for the compliment, Sat. Appreciate that. No, but yeah. I, 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 on, a, on a slightly serious note, I think it's fantastic what you're doing. I've been to uh, some of your shows um, and I've really enjoyed them. Uh, I'm not just saying that, but I have. And genuinely, I've okay. enjoyed them. But I kind of want to want to know a little bit of history of how you got together. I, I genuinely don't know how you got together. I'm hoping it's an interesting story of how you met and um how you, you, you watch bollywood films don't you sir i do i do okay well you can probably resonate with this uh what happened was that um we brothers at birth and got separated danny got the uh, uh crew grand ring and i got the necklace and 20 years later we just be ha having to be shopping in Waitrose, and I recognised the ring. He recognised the necklace. There you go. Realised we were brothers. Quite emotional. It was. Quite, very it um, but the other thing uh, that came to mind was not so much after all the emotion and the commotion, everything cleared up. You know, after we'd made this big scene in waitrose yeah. uh in the hygiene aisle wasn't it Danny? It, hygiene was, aisle. It, it just we just it just dawned on us what a two-timing get our dad was mm. yeah i mean shocking not just for you two at the time but probably a lot of white middle class people in the aisles <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah that's right I mean, that is, that, that's the pinnacle of asian people first of all two asians in weight rows and number two embracing each other yeah. uh making a scene um yeah, I'm, yeah you know. I'm, I'm not sure what they would have thought of two sardars hugging and crying and breaking down emotionally and saying to be oh. honest i think they thought we worked there <laughs> <laughs> and i think we'd just been awarded our zero contract hours 
<laughs> well, it's definitely st- stacked to the shelf. Um, yeah. It got worse when we started rubbing our beards together. I mean, that really... Um, was, that was a bit was too that... much, yeah. I mean, some I can imagine some old lady walking up and saying, do you know where the hummus is kept? Um, and Bob mm. and you probably say, not now, love. You know, we're in a moment. Well, we're in a moment. We're in a moment. Let's... I said uh, it's been emotional. It's yeah. been well, emotional. Unless she had a beard herself, and it, it was the three of us. That would that, that would have been that would have been interesting, definitely. Um, I, I, that is probably. Well, we've uh, been uh, childhood friends for a very very long time, so mm-hmm. been a long time, and um, I've I haven't never found Danny funny. He's always found me funny, and he's kind of clinged on to that, and just <laughs> we've just rocketed from there, haven't we, Danny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit of a hanger on. Yeah. On the cake cocktails, all right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. did you, uh, so did you find the, each other funny? I, I know Bob. I know your humour is very dry, very deadpan, and uh, your your del- delivery, you know. And, and Danny, you know, I known you for many many years, right? And uh, so sort of your love of comedy, I, I was never really aware at the time. We we knew each other at school and and things like that. So, did you both have a love of comedy? Did you both find the same kind of things funny? Do you know, what? well, I think uh, for us, really, like I say, it, it started off as you know, through family first. And, um, and then it was, we, Bob and I kind of got together on a totally different level, uh, in terms of our kind of love for sport before comedy, actually. So it was, it was my love for sport and, um, you know, and what, the, what our kids were doing kind of brought us together. And um, that kind of propelled us to do some work with a sports foundation we started up many years ago. Um, you know, so, so that that was really how Bob kind of kind of working in partnership. So you know, the whole kind of family connection, then taking it to the uh, you know kind of our passion, which then and then up from, up from that point it was really good. And then Bob and uh, Bob went and put his foot in it with the comedy, and he'll tell you the story behind that. And then me being a, a Right, you know, the hanger on. I just, um... to be honest, that during those times when we were building a sports foundation, um, I realized Danny did have a little, did have a humor bone in him. I thought, this guy's, he's all right, actually, he's, he's funny. Anyway, we used to have a lot of banter, a lot of banter, uh, and, and uh, a lot of fun. But uh, what happened one day was um, I went out with my friends and uh, we went out for dinner, and my friend happened to be a comedian. And we're amongst amongst those friends were bankers, lawyers, dentists, and we're all commenting about each other's professions. And uh, one of the bankers said to the comedian, it's, it's easy to stand up. Well, he lost it and said, right, that's it. Um, you're all doing one minute of stand up in my, in my next show. And um, slightly inebriated uh, throughout the evening, uh, people start dropping off and the challenge wasn't so uh, enticing anymore. But I was still standing there saying, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I got roped into doing it. And I roped in Danny as well. Yep. So we then performed and did a, a very first time, we did an eight minute, I think it was an eight minute sketch, wasn't it, Danny? Open mic session, yeah. We had an open, mic. Yeah, open mic session at my friend's comedy event. Um, I had a few to drink before I went on stage. Because I was so nervous. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Danny held it together brilliantly, and we actually got a few laughs, which we shocked did. both of us, to be honest. Yes. And we thought, yeah, we can do something with this. Yeah, yeah. People actually do find us funny. We don't just find each other funny; other people find us funny. So it went from there. That's fantastic. So, I mean, you you had a sort of a, a little bit of a helping hand with some alcohol. Uh, I know, Danny, you don't drink, do you? So you had to go in. You had to go in fully brave and uh, face the music. Because I spoke to uh, Sook Odula, as you know, uh, a comedian that you both know. And I said it's probably one of the hardest things to do is to be a stand-up. One mic, an audience, and you're either funny or you're not. You know, there's no grey lines, really. You know, we're either going to warm to you and find you funny, or it's going to be... a tough night. So, I mean, for you, Bob, you know, there must have been something within you to think, I want to kind of give this a go. You know, there must have been something there. Uh, 
I don't know. I just, I just, I just think, I just, I, you know, what? I just want to be out of my comfort zone mm. and, and do something different. Mm. Um, and I, I wasn't strong enough to do it on my own. Yes, I've got total respect for those guys and girls who who, who get up on stage and and do stand up entirely on their own. But with doing it with Danny, I felt like. Yeah, I could do this because I've got someone by my side. I don't necessarily pull it off. At least he can do it. Um, and the energy between us two, um, you know, it just happened. The thing is, if you feel confident with somebody on the stage and you feel very comfortable with them, mm. and then you go into a little bit of banter between yourselves and other people find that funny, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. But it's not something I could do on my own. I definitely couldn't do it on my own. I think just to add, I think the most important thing for Bob and I was that we, and I'm not saying that, you know, we, cause we've been so lucky to meet a lot of good comedians, like you say, you know, and along the way, and some people that are so good at their craft, they work really hard. You know, what's so I'd like to say about Bob and I was that we kind of went into all our shows that we actually totally enjoy the moment because you can be, someone on stage and you know and and, and you, then you could be someone different off stage because it's a persona but what the bob and i is what you see on stage is and that's the way it is because we had this one mantra one motto between ourselves and that was we'll keep doing this and the day we don't enjoy it anymore mm. it will, and we'll move on and that's why bob says comfort zone is absolutely right bob and i just like tried different things out we did the sports and the comedy came along we thought why not? You know, it's it's uh, give it a try. I mean, you know, and um, it's been a thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable experience yeah. to date. I mean, I mean, you both obviously. I think most it. of the ventures we've done have been have been a really good laugh, actually. Mm. I mean, the next one we're proposing is wife swap, but Danny isn't agreeing to that at the moment. Mm. But you know, it should be a laugh. Yeah, it's a shame he doesn't drink. You you, you may have had a better chance. Absolutely. He's, he's not laughing right now either. <laughs> that, that That's your catchphrase, right? You're not laughing now. But uh, I mean, it's, no, it's no laughing now. That's it. So, I mean, it's nice that you've got each other, really, because it's, it's nothing better than, you know, being together with someone well, our else. wives don't love us. No. I mean, what, what do they think? Now, you mentioned your wives, you know. Uh, what, what do they think? I mean, D- Danny, for yourself, when you said to your wife, look, I'm, I'm going to do some comedy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was that kind of reaction? And I'll ask you afterwards, Bob. You had a good laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you said it's working. <laughs> I'm, I'm already making people laugh. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, no, I, I, you know I, I'm totally supportive. Totally yeah. supportive. And, um, you know, I've got the freedom to, you know, to, to push, you know, to push that and, and, and try it out. And, uh, you know, just <laughs> things go. So it was, it was a full support. And, um, you know, not just... Yeah, but my mum's been itching to come to all my shows. I've been holding her back. So, and she she's a master herself, my mum. Uh, but she, you know, and we didn't let her obviously for obvious reasons. I said, you know, you know, it's better for you. won't get the show. Uh, but yeah, fully supportive, you know. And um, they've been quite instrumental in in <coughs> the time to do the and and just to sketch it. You know, um, fully, hundred percent. Mm-hmm. And yourself, Bob, reaction from, from home? Uh, I think the first thing my wife said to me, she said, uh, are you having a laugh? I said, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, and then um, she handed me a rubber, which I then managed to rub out the thumbprint on my forehead. And she oh, said, you're now released. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. How did that, how so did that feel being released after all them years? Was it like the Mend- Mandela moment for you? <laughs> oh, mate, it's probably going to be like when we come out of lockdown. Mm. Same sort of feeling. Yeah, nice. Just, uh, he, was yeah, a different, no. he was a different man. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, I was. Yeah. No, I mean, she just felt that I need to get out. Yeah, she's quite relieved that you're, you've got. Something. Yeah, I think she is. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been pretty bad for her. This COVID whole thing, lockdown has been. I mean, she thought she'd released me. I've come back now. <laughs> it's been pretty tough for her. Yeah. Pretty tough. She, she's, so, hanging, um, she's hanging in there, you know. So uh, it's, yeah, there's a lot of brave people out there. Um, so, so you had this uh, initial idea. You kind of was Bob. You was forced into stand up. You, you you took Danny along on your coattails, and 
you're the both now involved. How did how did you sort of merge it together to create the Chuckles Sings? Was that a, a name you came out with originally? Just thought, let's call ourselves Chuckles Sings. Was that your name on that first show that you did? I think we both enjoyed the Chuckle Brothers comedy. And then we looked at their, their branding, their name, the whole thing, and they thought, you know, <laughs> it's obvious, really. We love chuckling, and we are sings. So it kind of fit and went, let's do it, chuckle sings. Then um, my son came up with a logo, um, which I think both of us thought was quite cool. Yeah. And then we came up with the strap line because uh, we wanted to give that kind of serious impression yeah. um, that it's no laughing matter. So, yeah, no, it's just, it, you know, it's one of those moments you keep on thinking, and then suddenly you just come up, Chuckle Sings, it's brilliant. Great name. Yeah. It falls into place, doesn't it? And it all did fall yeah. into place quite yeah. nicely. It, it is a fantastic name. It, it just works perfectly. And I think for your acts as well, it, it, it kind of works with your acts. You know, you're not, you're not super serious in your acts. It's not political. It's more about observations, and you kind of play off each other with your little st your stories about life. And uh, so I think the name, the branding, and you guys together works. And also your physicality as well. Danny, I, I know you won't mind me saying, you're, you're slightly shorter. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. oh, 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 hold on. That's right. why we're sitting down and doing this interview, Sat. Yeah, oh, sorry. I don't think he wants to really bring up that issue. No, I'm standing up, you know. <laughs> Oh god! But, but it, it, it kind of works, you know. No short jokes, no short references. Sorry, yeah, we won't. I, I, I'll keep this. Short I mean, I mean, kind of, well, actually, since you brought up the height issues, that um, and I didn't really want to mention. You know, you said where did I meet Danny? How did I get on? With, you know, where did I discover his his skill, his his uh, just his abilities? Well, it was in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Right. Um, and that's where he really sh stood out for me. So, um, head, and shoulders, head and shoulders above the rest, yeah? Not quite. <laughs> Thanks. Love you too, man. <clears throat> so, but, I mean, yeah. I mean, at least we got the true story out now. So, I mean, how was, how was your pantomime days? Did, were they affected by your comedy? or? Uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, it was a tough choice. Uh, you know, it was... Panto and professional people, or Bob and someone who is quite the other way, really, um, who is uh, kind of, of anything to do with organisation, you know. So, yeah, yeah. So but you've got, you got to take a risk, right? I mean, look at, look at Bob. How can you not feel sorry for him? Look at that face, right? He's like a muck and any. You, you just can't say no to him. So I couldn't say no to him, sir. No, and, and I think the really off-putting thing for me as an interview there look there looks like there's a head growing out of Bob's shoulder, like a, an abscess. It does, yeah. yeah. And it yeah. feels like at some point that. But it's not. It's not one that you'd want to pop. No, and it, it feels no. like it's going to talk to me at any moment. You know, I can well, leave, leave it can do. Version. It can do yeah. if you want it to. Yeah. Just explain. You know, you know when you have the. Uh, you know, when you, <clears> you know when you have the good person, the bad person on your shoulder. Bob's telling you. Well, Bob's actually got rid of the good person. And he just kept the bad one on his shoulder. That's yeah. that's kind of what it's yeah. about. That, that that is me. Yeah, that so is the one that's putting him in trouble. Like, do it, Bob. Do it, Bob. He's he's the prankster, bad boy, shackle. Yeah. So he's the, he's the bad boy. Are you? Are you, and, and yourself? Who who are you? Are you? I'm I'm. If you put it this way, um, Bob creates the mess. I just get the Hoover and Hoover it up after him. That's the yeah. best way. I love Hoovering. Bob knows I love Hoovering. You do. He's got a Henry, <laughs> but yeah, no, I just think we work off each other. That's fine. That's, yeah. what, that's, what, that's what works for us. That's the whole, that's the, with the banter side, it's just, you know, we're, we're at the end of the day, Sat, both of us can take a joke. We yeah. know how far we can take it and that's what works. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, if, if he, he can, he's Teflon, I'm Teflon. Yeah. So I kind of sense just by this interview as well, you kind of, um, not to put a finer word on it, you kind of take the piss out of each other a little bit. And um, is that where it kind of... I think it's more mutual respect. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, you've already made a joke about his height as well. Okay. Even if uh, and now you're accusing me of taking the piss out of him. 
I'm just suggesting that could be one of the motivations. For I, the to be honest, I really can't take you seriously. I mean, Rick Astley's looking at me <laughs> and I'm thinking I'm never going to give up. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm just thinking that with my height, there's not much to take out, is there? Not, just not really. There's not much more. No. There's not much more. See, well, we're green now, Bob. We're green. I've won you back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, initially you you did that show and and you you got the name now. You got the branding. Where was the point where you thought? Zach, under- do you mind if I just put the money in the meter because I think my lights have gone out? No, no. This is going to be great comedy gold. We'll just wait for you. Yeah. Let's Sorry. Not talk, let's not talk to give him a complex while he's doing it. There you go. There you go. Is that better? Wait, what happened now? Did you put a light on? No, no, I just put some more money in the meter. Yeah, I can see you a lot clearer now. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So, yeah, so you, uh, that's probably threw me that as. Yeah. <laughs> I thought but you're a professional. I'm that's not. Am I with Rick Astley on my shoulder <laughs> and, uh, and Palm Jip on me? Palm Jip on me. Give me a break, man. But so, where, where, where is, so you, the branding was done. Uh, you had an idea, and did you think we want to do this again? We want to take it seriously. We want to do more shows, and eventually, you started creating your own shows, inviting other comedians as well. And and, and I know you did. Well, you are doing shows for Eleanor Hospice, um, a charity that's probably dear to your hearts, and we can speak about that obviously as well. Uh, we can be serious at one point uh, for the reasons why you do that. But where, where did that where did that sort of nucleus for that idea come along? I think we we were. Uh, asked to do a tour of the UK with a um, a well-known promoter, comedy promoter. And we we did all the gigs, um, but obviously you're a little bit restricted and you have to follow what the promoter's asking you to do. He, he brought it on his own acts and not knocking it, did, it was a fanta- fantastic tour. We sold out in a lot of, a lot of cities. Harrow, we end up getting nearly 600 people to our show at the Harrow Arts Centre. Wow. And then we went all the way up to Wolverhampton for a show. All the shows were sold out, fantastic. But I think what we wanted to do was we wanted to give the public really good value for money in the sense that we want to get the best, best comedians we could afford to come on our show and put on the best performance. Plus, we also wanted to make it a wider range of comedy. We felt that some of the comedy shows that we were part of tend to be just all Indian comedians. Mm. So what we wanted to do is uh, maybe in, uh, get some Jewish uh, humor, some Iranian humor, some English humor, and, and make it appealing to a wider range of um, audience. Mm. So that's why we took on the fact that, look, we love doing the comedy, we love doing the tour with other um, through a promoter, but wouldn't it be good if we had our own autonomy? In putting on our own show, so that's why we went in that direction. Yeah, and that make, it makes a lot of sense because I've seen your show, and uh, when you talk about the comedians that you chose to come on, you didn't just want Asian comedians. No, um, you wanted a range of different backgrounds. But I've always found with a with a good comedian, you can always relate to them, and a lot of their stories, Iranians and Jewish, are very similar to like, even Punjabi uh, backgrounds. You know, uh, I found myself laughing to their stories about their childhood growing up yeah. their, or their children and you know how they deal with them and so you know you know we know humans are you know practically the same you know we're, we all got the same kind of backgrounds we all think of uh, we all have lives with our families and we, we all find things almost the same funny you know and uh, so that, that's an interesting point i never really thought of it that way before and you know um so it's a difficult time for everyone uh, especially for comedians, I suppose, for show wise, because you you can't actually do stand up comedy at the moment because of uh, COVID nineteen. Um, was there anything planned this year that you had which has been stopped? We had, I think we had a show in April, didn't we? We had a show in April, uh, booked. Um, so that that was cancelled, um, and we were planning on doing, looking to do a show in the latter half of this year. Um, Bob says one of the what you know not just doing it, but one of the things for us was to actually bring comedy to Gravesend. You know um, because we know what it's like. You know where you want to go see a comedy show, 
you know, you're gonna have to go into London and then, you know, go to a club there and it's, you know, it's a long night and the money people spend to get there. So we thought, we've got a lovely venue at Woodall Halls, you know, let's do something there. And that, that helped towards the, the success in the show. Um, so Craig said, we were gonna come back to, because we did one of our big shows last year. We, 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 you know, we did a lot of our shows in the studio downstairs. And then last year we went upstairs to the main auditorium. Uh, and I think, Bob, was it? Near 500 last year? Sorry, it was in? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we had five, yeah, just over 500 people. You know, which for us is, it was a big push, big risk, but we were very fortunate uh, in having the backing from friends and family and, you know, good support from the community. Uh, obviously, the time we spent on finding the right comedians, getting the right balance, you know, actually, we're. So on the back of that success from last year, you know, we were planning on doing uh, a show in Gravesend later this year, which which obviously we won't be doing now. Um, but you know, it kind of gives us a bit more time, right, to analyse uh, where we've where we how far we've got the comedy journey, but also to to start looking at what other talent there is out there mm. for comedy. So, you know, it's it's good in a way because all the other are now kind of analysing their material. And, and how they're going to perform. So, yeah, we'll come back again. Uh, just a shame, you, you know, uh, guys to do a couple of shows with, with, you know, all being with people's safety in mind. It won't happen now. Mm. Are, are you, are you prepared? We've also taken this uh, time out as well, the, the opportunity. We, uh, Danny's been writing a book for the last uh, couple of years. Um, and um, I think he's going to be publishing sometime later on this year. And I've taken this opportunity of lockdown to start my start my book as well. So um, we have been spending, and we've we've been linking together to try and think of new material as well. Um, and um, so yeah, we've got a few things on you know in the pipeline. Uh, hopefully, obviously, Danny's book will be coming out towards the end of the year, and hopefully, mine will be coming out next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and we look forward to releasing those. Yeah, that'd be exciting times. And I, I, I'm i waiting for the influx of comedians talking about COVID-19. Uh, it'd be good if they had like a, a embargo. All comedians can't talk about COVID-19 when it's over. Because I don't know about you, but I've had enough of it now. Um, well, we, we don't actually call it COVID-19. We, we call, uh, call it Govinder. Mm. Um, so we've never, really, we've never really addressed it as COVID, have we, Dan? We haven't, uh, but you're right. You know, I, I think a lot of comedians will try to use you know, COVID within their material, uh, certainly around the lockdown. But um, for us, you know, we're Asians, right? We're kind of used to the lockdown, that right? We're we're, we're used to the minimal diet, the not going out, the being under restriction. It's pretty much second nature for us. Actually, the life we've been living now has been a bit of a surprise. That's yeah. been more of a shock than anything. This is back to reality for us, really. Yeah, I think for a lot of Asians, uh, being told to stay at home. Um, the only thing we're not doing is study. Yeah. No, that, that, that's, that's the it. only difference. Well, we, we are, from our childhood days, it was just stay home. Straight after school, don't go out and play with your friends. Stay home, go and study. But I, I don't think, well, Bob, I, I don't think we'll use COVID-19 in other materials. I don't, I mean, I, I do concur a little bit that people are sick and tired of, of that, and I think the danger is you're going to get a lot of comedians using the reusing the same material and kind of rehashing it to how it's worked in their background. So you know, as COVID worked in the Asian community or the Jewish community or the Nigerian community, or you know, so I don't know. Let's say Bob, I, it's a shame actually, Danny. People can't really see the full your full height and everything, but Danny has uh, established a quarantine food bump that uh, people haven't seen so i mean that's not a joke but it's just a statement of fact i thought i'd put that in where's that come from uh, why does that come uh, what's the purpose behind that bob that, well they can't see what you look like right now so Sorry, just one second mate what, why bring that up now how many times have i told you <laughs> look we're on there anyway is that right. what are you saying i can wait i can wait if you want to just um, that's all right it was embarrassing uh, Friend. Uh, it, it's it's always worth being a bit tamasha in this but anyway carry on yeah so um you guys all right now danny well we'll move on uh i'll move on to something lighter uh, i i one of the things uh, that, that won't be me then 
No, right. So well, one of the things you won't sidetrack me this time, Bob. One of the things I have been thinking about recently is uh, COVID-19 and the origins of COVID-19 and 5G networks. And I thought if there's two people I could ask or any person I could ask who could probably put some light on this, it was uh, another two comedians who couldn't come on today. So while you're here, could you... Oh, Substitutes, yeah. Could you, yeah, uh, yeah while yes, you're here, five G. Uh, yeah. Anyone? Do you do you have any views on five G and COVID nineteen? Is it Bob, real? Do you, want, do you want to go first? Because I know me and you have had some heat. I'll let Bob go first. No, 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 I just think it's all conspiracy anyway. So, um, no, I think it, it'd be more informed coming from you, Dan. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't buy the five G <laughs> out of it. Um. Okay. I'll put Bob in quarantine there for a minute. Um, so I don't, I don't really buy the 5G thing. Um, uh, the bat, really, I don't know. I mean, it, it must have been a pretty cheesed off bat. Really, really, really cheesed off bat. It probably thinking, was yeah. cheesed off. Have you seen that bloody market that it was in? I, yeah, I mean, well, you know, without, I guess, you know, those, those kind of markets have been going on for a century. And, um, you know, I think... Uh, I think we've been. I think we're unfortunate <coughs> that you know we're in this predicament, really. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm not sold on the idea that you know the origin is what we say the origin is. I, I think it's uh, 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 definitely not from five G, but definitely from the uh, live markets. Yeah, yeah. Let's so go with the live market theory. I'll go with the it's been fashioned theory. So we're going with live markets. Wuhan, not 5G. I just want to clear that out for all. all no, 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 what, what are your thoughts, Sat? What are your thoughts? Do you think you're 4G or 5G? I'm going with, I'm going with plandemic. Sorry, plandemic is my plandemic. Oh, yeah, that's yours. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, um, any kind of sort of microwave, uh, any kind of rays in, in the world are affecting us somehow. You know, even a microwave meal can have some impact on your mind. Um, there's been times I've cooked many meals and absolutely gone crazy, you know, um, and it, that's from defrost. Amazing. Or microwave chips. Yeah. But do you remember McCain microwave chips? Microwave chips, yeah. Do you have problems, do you have problems with defrosting dal and subji? Is that, that could that be a problem for you? Mm, mm, potentially, potentially. I'm learning a lot. I, I, it could be. Maybe, but... I'm, I'm just thinking it might be that you, you're having trouble with the Cost options on the microwave set. Mm. I, I think I think where this um, COVID nineteen has come from is exactly what the government tells us, and where it came from. I believe everything the government tell us. Yeah. Yeah, everything. Yeah. You haven't had a microwave in the last minutes, have you? I, I did actually. <laughs> no, on a serious note. Yeah. I did, I did yeah. Have you seen the signs, Dan? Have you seen the signs? He's twitching. Yeah, he's bridging, he's stroking. Yeah, um, I did actually. He's got micro- a picture of Mike Ashley. Yeah, <laughs> I did microwave. Rick Ashley, sorry, right, not Mike. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> that, that that was his brother. He was shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but at least he's a billionaire now. I was sports direct. <laughs> yeah, while while Rick keeps singing, never going to give you up for the hundredth yeah. time. Kid, he's sick of he it. Says, he said, "Alpha <laughs> Fraser, I will never give you up." <laughs> I think I think it'll be sad. I think it'll be a while before anyone finds out what the source of the truth is somewhere. The problem is there's too much fake news. That's the problem. That's one yeah. thing that's come out from this whole episode is the amount of fake news and the you know how easily we can be um, influenced. And that's the scary thing that I yeah. think for me. There's too many people making too much wrong stuff up. You know, too much fake news. There's, there's too many people that can share their opinion. You see online. And yeah. a majority of people, I don't want to hear what you think about things, you know, online, on social media or Facebook. And so everyone can put their point across and, you know, some points get some traction and it becomes viral and it becomes a be and end all. And so, I mean, numbers make a difference. So if, if you've put a video out there and you're talking complete nonsense and bullshit, but you've got millions of views or likes and so people well, start this- believing it, you know, it's a, well, you, just just on that point, you might have noticed. I mean, just on on both on a chuckle sinks and personal level for me, but 
you know, I, as soon as it's kind of start of March, I think, you know, and, and Bob and I, we, you know, family-wise, we were together until about February. And I remember, you know, two or three, but you know, I came off social media, you know, personally, uh, you know, for, I have now for 10 weeks, right? And I don't do Instagram personally. And Bob and I haven't really put a lot of stuff on our Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you know, we, we've kind of moved from social media, um, you know, because, a, I don't, we don't want to be with what's going on, you know, while we both individually keep up to date with it and, you know, uh, fact check everything that comes through. But, you know, it's one less, you know, it gives us time to focus on the things that Bob spoke about earlier as well. And just don't need that kind of noise, really. Mm. Just, you know, mm. I thought it was because we lost all our followers, Dan. We've still got a few. We bought them off. Oh. Yeah, okay. they're, on, they're, on, they're on yearly contracts. Okay. So, um, yeah. It's kind of it's kind of a no, double. I, personally, personally, I think there's too much information. It's information overload, and I think we would all been in a better position, maybe ten years back when social media wasn't so rife. Um, we would all just cope with this problem a lot better. Now there's too many people putting their two bit in, and it's confusing the hell out of us. Mm. I mean, the government's sending out confusing messages, but the fact that we're getting information from so many different sources now, from so many experts it's confusing the hell out of everyone and uh, it's not good yeah too much I, information is not a good thing i think no. it's di it's a difficult situation for you guys as well when you're trying to do something create something it's a double-edged sword because you 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 I mean, even myself we need social media to get the word out yeah so, yeah so you make an event and you create it you get your community but you need you need that social media interaction and uh, it, it's a difficult one. It is annoying. I'm not a great fan, to be honest, but to be honest, if it wasn't there, I wouldn't have this show. Um, no. Yeah. So, but, so we kind of need it, but I remember the good old days. We need it in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I remember the old, the Facebook of old when it was just about families and friends and you just post things and it was friendly and it wasn't yeah. much politics on there. It was more about, holiday pictures and you you catch up with your friends and but that's all kind of changed now it, it is a tool and um, you know it's used for nefarious reasons as, as well as good reasons as well but i think it's just gone out of control i think mark zuckerberg when he created it with his friends uh when he's 17 18 or whatever i don't, I don't think he knew it was going to be this beer moth it is now i don't think he thought it's going to turn into well, this. we've got one of the worst presidents of the united states using facebook and twitter and everything or social media basically in the wrong way creating spats with people when i mean he's lowering himself to a playground level yeah through social media i mean to be honest that that's a way that social media is being used in a bad way yeah. but there's lots of really good things happening i mean like you're putting the show on, it's entertainment, it's good stuff. But we don't need stuff like Donald Trump uh, coming on board and putting his two bit in. I mean, Donald Trump's a uh, uh, comedian's, he's uh, unbelievable for comedians because the guy himself, he, he's, he's hilarious if he wasn't so dangerous. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know in, injecting himself with um, Dettol. Was it Dettol or the... Yeah, no, it's, it's it? not a bad thing. I wish he had drunk some as well. But, um, yeah, no, that's, that's uh, yeah, it's crazy stuff. He's on the anti-malaria tablets. He doesn't wear a mask when he's supposed to be wearing a mask. But the guy's made a Teflon. Yeah, <laughs> he absolutely is. I mean, I, I think the only tablets that guy ta is taking is them uh, little, little blue ones. Yeah. Well, so he stands upright? Them ones. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, he's six foot five, I think, or six foot four. So, yeah, he probably is on those. But, you know, the thing is, the, the public in his country, because he, he delivers. And I don't want to say I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big Trump fan, but he, he del you know, he's not one to hold back. And he's, he's, a, he's a man of action, he delivers. And, you know, it, it, you know he'll, they, they want, the country wants someone like him, you know, who can protect the country, who they feel is protecting the country from, you know, unfortunately, things like, terrorism and things like that so if he's doing that general public will look at those stats or the actions and say you know just voting him in you know or something whatever's going on in the background but that's the scary thing yeah it's, it's also the people that are that, that you know that are opening the door and letting back in again i think it's the only positive positive thing you could say about donald trump is that what you see is what you get whereas with a lot of politicians you know they're probably all thinking the same thing but they just 
they're very discreet about the way they do it. Um, I mean, most politicians are, are corrupt. So um, with Donald Trump, it's what you see is what you get. Yeah, I think he's, uh, he's overtly honest. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But Bob seems to, he's back. Yeah, he, he's, Sorry. he's so honest about it. Uh, again. Yeah, he's, he's so honest about his um, corrupt methods. He's like, yeah, I did bring that guy up in, you know, I don't care. Yeah. Perfect call, you know. I, yeah, I, I, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Um, but he probably will get the economy running again. Yeah, yeah, because he's going to force these people out to work, and who yeah. cares if a few die? Yeah, yeah, that's his attitude. Yeah. Go yeah, it's all right. It's only the old ones. It, he, yeah. 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 Well, look, I mean that 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 was a tangent and a half, wasn't it? Talking about Donald Trump, but yeah. So, so for your future plans now, uh, guys, chuckle sings. Uh, obviously, we it's hard to answer that question. I know because we don't know what's going to happen this year. But say it does by the end of this year. We overcome it and there's more gatherings and we can do some smaller shows. Maybe people sitting, you know, uh, one seat away from the next person. Um, you know, there might be some ways we can get people together. Uh, would you be considering doing a show, you know, for charity? I think if we got the right material together, Sat, I mean, yeah. I'm talking things like sanitizer. Yeah. 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 Wet ones. Yeah wet ones and stuff like that if we can get that sort of material then i think we've put on a good show we're definitely yeah. on for next year definitely yeah. on for next year. I think uh, if, you, if you do have sanit uh, sanitizer there and wet wipes i think it'd be packed out i think i think i think we'll wipe the floor yeah is that, is that sanitizer or sanitizer no sanitizer okay, thank you just clear that one up um yeah, yeah i mean no it's, i think um definitely because for us, it's the opportunity to do the shows, if we can do it, and the opportunity to raise money for charity, that is the main aim for us, mm -hmm. right? So and we're quite, we're, do you know what's that? We're quite upfront and transparent about that. Mm -hmm. Our show is all about, we cover our costs to break even, and then everything above that is charity-based, mm -hmm. right? We'll try to help you know, local charities where we can. And that, for us, spans back now, Bob, I'd say probably eight, nine years from when we did yeah. the days, foundation days and raise, we raised in excess of 12, 13,000 for Great Ormond Street over a mm. four year period. Wow. So we'll continue doing that. If, if we get the opportunity to do a show, which gives us the opportunity to raise money for a local charity, we'll do it. Mm. You know, that and it's a great cause. It's a great cause. So the cause, um, is it Eleanor Hospice that you use? Eleanor the, Hospice, you, yeah. Was there a reason behind that? Choosing that charity, I mean, there's hundreds of charities out there. Is there a particular reason? One of my one of my reasons was that um, my father is actually a Lions member, and it was his Lions Club that got involved in building, uh, helping put the building up, basically paying for the building uh, through the Lions. It was originally called the Lions Hospice, and the Lions Club had a lot to do with it. So there's that link for me. Uh, my wife also volunteers there. Uh, on a weekly basis and um, she basically brought to my attention exactly how hard everyone works there and it's not really a job for these guys they actually go way beyond their job descriptions and some of the the, the um, uh, canteen staff one year at Christmas came in on the day off Christmas day to just feed everyone uh, they're just unbelievable um really really good people and um, we've had the opportunity uh to meet a lot of them haven't we dan yeah oh, that's fantastic you, you know uh and i think and also um uh, it's it's tried for us to to help with work with eleanor is to raise the profile where we can of uh, a charity like that within the asian community because mm. Uh, predominantly everyone if you mention Eleanor or a hospice to an Asian person the first thing they think is it's a place where people go to die well actually in truth people have recovered from a hospice you know and the hospice is all about the wider community. so by by helping whichever way to spread the message hopefully we can we can help inclusion within our own community so that yeah absolutely you know and that's 
for us why some of the kind of key key factors you know but again it's not just Eleanor we've you know any small charity any charity of any size we can help locally uh you know whether it's money or providing we'll do what we can so you know because uh, you know we're, we're going to use some kind of service in our life in our lifetime or know someone who may use it so you know we'll, we'll try our best to, to do what we can yeah, that's fantastic. So look, we're coming towards the end. I'm going to give each of you some parting words of uh, wisdom, or maybe not, um, to anyone listening out there. And also, if you can tell everyone listening your social media channels, you know how much we love social media. Um, so where they can follow you, keep up to date. And obviously, as soon as your shows are out there, people know where to kind of catch up with the news. Uh Danny, we'll start with you and we'll finish with Bob, if you don't mind. That's fine, yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think he's expecting you to say a few words there, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think Sat, Sat said keep it short. Cheers, Bob. Um, right, from my side, you know what? It's um, tough times. Uh, stay positive. Um, enjoy. Um, time with your family, um, you know, try to get through it. That's the most important thing. Stay fit, stay healthy in mind and body where you can uh, with whatever little or large space you've got, um, you know, and uh, yeah, you know, learn something new, right? While we've got the time, try to learn. I know it's easier said than done. Try to learn something new. Um, and from our, certainly from my perspective, what, you know, Chuckle Sings uh, keeps supporting us because, uh We've had an absolute cracking journey. Um, we've got a bit of a full stop, but it's not, it's not going to last forever. And, um, you know, we're, at the end of it, I think we'll just, we'll have some new stuff as a, as a, as a community. Um, you know, I think we'll come out and, and um, yeah, I, I think everyone will be better in the long run. And I think just stay positive. From, from my perspective, is positivity is key. Thank you. That's Bob, Bob for yourself. Uh, uh, Sam, have I got time to say anything? Because I thought you said keep it short. I did keep it short, but Danny's just, um, he's, he's overrun it now. You might as well just go for it. Fuck it. Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I mean, uh, Danny's literally covered every aspect of a message or a question that someone could ask. Uh, how <laughs> much of it was relevant to the question you asked is, uh, is, uh, well, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, carry on in vain about comedy, Danny. Well done. Um, but no, serious. On a serious note, um, yeah. I mean, COVID, fantastic. Uh, either come out as a hunk, a chunk, or a drunk. Um, and uh, good luck, and look forward to seeing all of you. Um, hopefully in twenty twenty one. Hopefully. Thank you. Bob. Did, was that was that short enough? That was short enough. I, I, I did I'm, want to say more, but yeah, I still think it was a bit long. I, to, be, to be honest, to be honest, I lost my trail of thought. I fell asleep during Danny's response. Yeah, I was thinking. No, no, thank you. I, I should have really put you uh, first, and then Danny. Yeah. I think. Well, um, oh yeah, and then you could have just cut the Zoom meeting. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> I've only got a free account. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you guys. You know, um, I don't think you mentioned where they can catch you on Facebook. Uh, is it Chuckle Sings on Facebook? So uh, it's, uh, yeah, so you can go to our website, chucklesings.co.uk. Um, okay. Uh, we're on Instagram, Chuckle Sings, Facebook, Chuckle Sings, and uh, Twitter, Chuckle Sings, at Chuckle Sings. But we're also... Uh, we're on Tinder as well, aren't we? We're on Tinder, yeah. Uh, we call Chuckle Sings on Tinder? I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, we are. Nice. Uh, that's normally a threesome. Um, but um, we're doing a few short yeah. videos as well. So head on to Facebook on Rock Raw and check us out there. Well, fantastic! Look, I, I've had a great time. It's been fun. I've uh, I'm in a great mood now, and uh, so I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope everyone. So I loved it. Well. Sat really did. Thank you. I was going to give you. A I was going to give you a show rating, Sat. Thank you. Go on. What now? Medium. Sat? Oh, I like medium. Oh, you like me? To, to be honest, Danny. 
Danny, just sat, don't worry. I was, I was going to dust off his jokes for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's blowing behind you the tumbleweed I'm, I'm glad <laughs> this is brilliant thank you thanks for your time mate appreciate yeah. it. So, no, thank you very much on, on a truthful note thank you guys it has been great fun I have really enjoyed it you know and uh, I appreciate you taking your time out and uh, I'm sure everyone listening is going to enjoy this interview and uh, check Sat, out do we work. get double time for Sunday evening by the way no you don't what? mate I'm Indian seriously <laughs> You lot decided Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you, you never told us who the other two comedians were. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Why? Um, I, I, I shocking. They're the ones that cancelled on you, Sat. Yeah, yeah. Shocking. And we've had to fill in, fill in for. Shockingly, I just made that shit up. Yeah. Do you know what, Bob? Yeah. Did you hear that other station, Dan? I told you to go on that one. Yeah. Uh, they got more fun. They shouldn't, they shouldn't call us chapel things. They should call us poly filler or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Covering up on his cracks. Guys, you are my first choice and my only choice. Because no, no one else can make a Sunday. Hello. <laughs> 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 right, oh, guys, got to go. Take yeah. care and we'll speak yeah. real soon. See you, man. <laughs>